let's keep going with the panels. In this case, we're going to talk about leadership for that. You can see that Mercedes Remedi will be a host again. She likes the role. For everyone uh, just joining us, she's a co-founder of Endy. Uh, it's a company that it teaches English to companies. And together with Vera, they have a podcast. And it's very good and recommended. And she has more than 15 years of experience leading teams and generating content. Alejandra Viglietti. She started in IT 15 years ago. She has done testing, different roles, area chief. She's our uh, COO at Abstracta. Cecilia Benassi the co-founder of Crawler, one of the sponsors you can see in our stands. She has 20 years of experience in software development and she is passionate about software quality and uh, going with teams to help them agile practices. Karel Ledesma, he's Jolo, as we know him. He has, he has 27 years of experience and he has supported teams to create, uh, Chris, he's been creating teams that are motivated and committed, and he's done this through coaching, training, and it's uh, a pleasure to have him here. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming, for staying. Leadership. It's quite a big title, right? Topic. So we're going to talk about work a little bit. Let's do a definition first, a more general definition. Do you want to start? You look like you like it. Do you want to give us a, a theoretical framework? Tell us uh, briefly, what's leadership? Hello? We can look at it from several perspectives. From my perspective, what I've learned in the last few years is that leadership is the ability to, uh, of an individual to be able to influence a system. That system can be anything. That's a really short definition to not bore people. We had like 20 minutes, so that's okay. That's perfect. When do you know you're, you are in front of a leader? How do you know someone is a leader? What are the qualities they have to have? Well, personally, I assess some skills that could be... Uh, the person is insightful, uh, assess the situations, identify and communicate, uh, maybe a motivator, uh, a problem solver on that day-to-day -day basis. And that is what gives us a first image that there might be someone who shows a leadership role. But there's also, we also have to identify those skills that need to be worked on. So in that sense, in a lot of cases, if the other person is interested in working on those skills, uh, we can do an agreement with them to generate that career path. Ale, what do you think? I was thinking that those characteristics, I agree with what you're saying, but they change depending on the environment in which we're at. And that leads that there are some leadership characteristics that are given by the environment and by peer acknowledgement. Sports is not the same, for example. I don't care about sports, for example. An assigned role, sometimes that co-worker
if someone uh, is able to get people to go somewhere, that's also leadership, to be able to influence their peers. So you have to pay attention to that. You have to be able to observe and the reaction that the person has on other first people. Is there a profile, a leader profile for the for IT sector, or does it depend on each team? Well, it, it, the, the easy answer is that it depends. Depends on where the group is at. Is it a software company? Is it a system team? Within IT, it depends on the roles, the technologies. There's people that are leaders because they know a lot. They're good technically, and they have a their knowledge because of their experience. And some people might know a bit less, but they have they always have the right word, and they're not nervous. They don't get nervous when something happens, or they get nervous and they don't show it, so they unblock certain things. What I want to say, maybe it's a bit uh, a cliche, but leaders don't have to be the best technically. That's very old school. Um, the the no, the knowledge of the team doesn't have to be top, but what by what what I know if I'm the leader, I need to nurture myself and knowledge with what my team might give me, and we need to moderate this and understand what are the skills that everyone brings to the table. That's a, a leadership skill as well. Is being a leader a role? Well. It depends. Good question. Within organizations and teams, sometimes there's roles that are defined. Sometimes there's a leader role defined. I would like to differentiate the leadership role that is given by structure of a company versus leadership. Leadership is certain acts or certain actions you might take in different moments where you execute leadership, you influence. So it becomes important to think about thinking about connecting with the company, the teams. It's important to have a purpose because maybe you're influencing um, for something that is wrong in terms with the organization. So leadership is uh, what, uh, what it needs to do is to make the vision a reality. How to compose that vision from a higher hierarchy role and in the everyday uh, practices. An important role within any team is that that there's someone that there's um, distributed leadership. I love this. I, I don't like to talk about a leader. It, it seems to make it a figure that's more important than the rest. And I don't think it's like that. I think that sometimes people that are fly under the radar are more of a leader and start building a community for a certain purpose. Is the leader the one who's going to generate the purpose or is it the organization? Well, there has to be implicit leadership within the organization that defines the purpose, the general purpose. Then there are going to be other objectives related to that purpose. Just adding to what Gabriel was saying, I agree that the organization needs to provide these opportunities. But it's also a duty of the people who are members of the organization to generate from their own perspective skills, methods, and different ways in which to work to read scenarios, to generate results. And with this in mind, we, many times we can delegate. As leaders of an organization, we need to know how to delegate 
um, in people that we trust, that we trust, who have the same work culture as us, and to let them work freely within their own methods and styles. I do agree that there needs to be at positions of leadership. Each person has different professional aims. We want to reach certain goals. Uh, we, we ask ourselves, where do I want to be five years, 10 years from now? So part of that growth and professional growth that all of us dream of We will do that if the organization enables it. And it needs to be compatible with the organization culture. We were talking just now about the match between the between the culture of the organization and each individual per, individual person. Because if if there is no match, people will look for other possibilities can we have leadership qualities and personal professional growth we can also grow from other places and leadership is not always the best the only aim to succeed today because of the work of the way we work we're closer to different ways of leadership. Um, we're working with a team perspective way more than before. Being a leader doesn't mean that we, well, I've reached my goal and now I can rest. And no, it doesn't work like that. And it's important to consider that leaders change within the context of their own lives because I'm not the same person I was five years ago. You evolve and so does your role. So what are the challenges that remote work brings in terms of leadership? Because many things, many interactions occur spontaneously in the common areas in the office. And when you have your team distributed sometimes in different countries even. What do you think are some of the main challenges and do you have any tools to face this? Well, I have many things to say about this. Currently, there is a huge challenge for the companies that didn't have, didn't offer remote positions and had to offer remote work um, because of the pandemics. So the, there need to be a change um, where people started working in a critical condition uh, because they needed to have to establish their offices at home. And it was this was very hard for many people who were forced into remote work. Mm, but remote work has been around for many years, but it worked in companies that have that had a set a fixed set of rules, which is something that not, not, not always happened during the pandemics. So it's important to take care of employers of a team. We needed to learn a lot of from the March. It's easier to, to, to set our expectations from the onset. I will need X and Y from you, and you need such and such from me. So it's a matter of defining and setting schedules, work hours. We need to fix and set these agreements. So many of these agreements evolved
in a forced way during the pandemics. Many of these agreements have to do with having a close communication between the team members and the leaders, generating one-on-one -on -one discussions, in order to understand how everyone is feeling in teams that are sometimes working 100% remotely from different locations. There needs to be an early feedback on how people is working, how they feel. How is every member of the, each member of the team experiencing this kind of work? Are they working at home? Do they have an office house? We need to understand all of this to take actions when they're needed. So you said the magic word, feedback. And because precisely related to your question, Mercedes, this applies to all work, whether it's remote or not. It's important to have an actual set of feedback, cycle of feedback. In my experience, the main interested party in feedback is the, the person providing the feedback. This has to be a planned action. Is that the leader, the one that, is it the leader that provides feedback? Well, not, not necessarily. Within a team, there needs to be someone that teaches the other members that there needs to be a feedback. And what will the culture be for providing this feedback? We are all responsible within a team of the relationships that are being established within the team. We are all equally responsible. The leader does not have a higher responsibility in this sense. They do have different responsibilities, certainly, but feedback cycles are key. It's not just giving an opinion. It's a, a feedback cycle is when a necessity arises within a team. And from this necessity, from this need, we can demonstrate certain facts and we present these facts to the person in the context of the team's work. It shouldn't be focused on a personal uh, feedback. This won't generate the effect that we're after. We need to provide feedback. We need to have actual facts that can be demonstrated from both ends. And it needs to end in a requirement. So I will ask the person something based on the feedback cycle. Could you please collaborate in reaching this goal? And if that person agrees, then there will be consequences. If they agree to help, based on the feedback, there will be an agreement. We are both committing to this change. So feedback is not just about giving your opinion, but it's about establishing agreements within the team. What happens when these agreements are broken? So, because the leaders are sometimes perceived as an illuminated person with higher responsibilities. But what happens when the agreements do not go through? This is one of the bigger issues that leaders face today, um, setting boundaries. Leadership has four dimensions in terms of structure, right, of hierarchy. You lead your colleagues. You 
you also need to interact with senior management. And also, I need to lead my own work. That's what you don't realize until you become a leader yourself. I need to have this conversation, which I don't feel like having, but I need to for the sake of the project, for the sake of the business. So it's it's easier when maybe someone else was in charge of that feedback, but when you have to when you realize that there are things to change, to improve, and to recognize it, it's a very hard thing to do. And you need to be able to do that as a leader, including your own work. And how do I continue with the with the work? interactions when a feedback was not successful, when my approach was not appropriate. So it's important to understand these issues on agreements and thinking of feedbacks as agreements. When agreements are broken, how do we deal with that? It used to be easier before when hierarchies, hierarchies were more fixed, right? So I'm in charge, I'm the boss, and you'll do what I say. But that has certainly changed, and leaders today, they need to work around this. Many times people naturally avoid conflict. Because I'm, let's face it, it's not a nice thing to to have a conflict, to have an argument. Within teams, within organizations, we need to identify conflicts, differences. And we need to manage conflicts that doesn't escalate as to break down relationships but not be afraid of conflicts because conflicts lead to growth. If we avoid conflict, we're not going to grow. That's very important. From leadership, there are a lot of things that we can do in this sense. When there is a disagreement in the feedback cycle, when the person replies, I cannot do what you're asking me to do. Many times, there is an implicit kind of damage or break in the relationship. Does it end there? No, it doesn't. It escalates into the corporation, into the business. So we need to solve that conflict. Okay, so you don't agree, make a counter offer. We need to be open to what the other person, the other end has to say. It's not only my input. It's very important to take into consideration this aspect. Cecilia, in terms of being assertive and terms like conflict, when we talk about gender in, in particular, are there any differences in leadership when it comes to gender? Or is it the same to talk about female or male leadership? In my experience, I think there are no differences. It doesn't, gender doesn't matter in this sense, whether we're I have personally the experience of working with women leaders. And this generates a, a very a specific, a singular environment. 
the the interactions are are different the trust relationships are the that but it, of course it can also lead to more conflicts that we need to solve but on our daily activities it's comfortable it's closer we can talk about we can discuss about this closer perspective we can talk about our professional history or the things that we're experiencing experiencing in the team in my experience i think it's nice to work with women leaders I let do you how do you feel about women in leadership roles? Do they need new spaces? Well, the leadership is also determined by the environment. And I mean I agree and that is true in any in any context. Uh, what's been harder for me is to identify myself with a leadership role because i was used to seeing men in this in these roles i didn't feel comfortable in these environments and when women are leading they are used to assign other kind of roles because you're so kind and the team needs this kind of attitude i would like you to take care of that so the approach to 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 leadership is different so what i think is that we also need to provide the possibility to men so that they know that they can adopt different and another kind of leadership they don't need to follow the predetermined leadership that a male is expected to to provide uh, we as women we are expected to behave in a certain way we should grow independent from this from these stereotypes i would like to supplement that I love to read about theories in leadership and one of the first theories states that in order to execute leadership you need to be male uh, because of the characteristics of the male right so I I think I'm I absolutely disagree with this theory I think that the theory that I like and, and is situational leadership which means that you are a leader who adapts to your context that's what our industry requires today and i would say in every industries the need to adapt this is also greatly dependent on you, you don't always need to be a coach sometimes your leadership needs to be more from a manager perspective but always with the capacity to adapt if you're more of an extroverted person if you have good communication skills um we think that you will be a better leader necessarily and that is not true so a leader needs to listen that's the most important skill that a leader should have to be a good listener many times in we see publicly and in social media that the managers the role of the manager versus the leader and the leader is good and the manager is bad 
that's a stereotype. It's different roles, different situations, different contexts, and they complement, they, they, they supplement each other. It shouldn't be conceived like that. Leadership is a long-term position. So it, 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 it's more than a three-meeting aim. It's a long-term interaction. It was a real pleasure to be here. Thank you for answering all my questions. And I would like to also thank our audience for being here December 9. A round of applause for the audience, please. Thank you. Do we have any do we have any questions? So this is a question for Gabriel. Gabriel, when you said feedback needs to be oriented towards the relationship rather than the person, I had heard it before, but I, I'm thinking about the leadership definition you said earlier about the influence of the person, which sounds like influence in sort of like a negative way. How do you mean that it, what did you mean by that? Because I want to cultivate that trust with the interaction, but why not with the actual person in particular? Okay, firstly, um, evidently the discussion will be between two persons, but the aim should be the framework of the relationship because the objective is the, is the feedback that we're doing, working on together. We need to focus on the observations that you noticed based on your needs and to have a dialogue, which sometimes is easy and sometimes not so much. Thank you so much for your for your ideas. I had the pleasure of working with Ali. What do you think in terms of leadership and skills that a leader should have? Do you think that anyone who wants to be a leader can be a leader? Or are there people who are just not suited for the job? Well, we need to think about flexibility. If you're very rigid, um, it will be very hard to be a leader. You need to be open to other people thinking differently from you. To be a leader, probably you had a leader before working with you, so you understand the role. That's maybe why you are interested in trying this role. I think that being curious uh, is something that is already enables you to aspire to be a leader. I think that also it's important that people who are interested in this kind of roles and get there, understand that trying the leading role doesn't mean you are stuck there forever. It might not be a good match for you. But definitely you will need to be very, very, you will need to want to work and interact with other people. That means that in IT, we're all at night working at computers alone. That's just that, a myth.
I think that we can take many things from life to apply in this line of business. If you want to be a leader, you need to be able to accept what you do right and what you do wrong. And you need to see the path that you want to, to follow and be willing to work with others. And let's start with oneself. You will need to show your vulnerability. That's not a disqualifying skill. On the contrary, as a leader, you need to be able to show your own vulnerability. And you will generate the desire to help you within the team. And that's what makes the team successful. To influence on someone, it's, it's, it's very different to manipulating someone, right? Let's not confuse influence, influencing on someone and manipulating someone. To influence on someone is to generate motivation. That's what we're looking to as leaders. We want to do this, not manipulate. If I manipulate, I'm going to use your, your, your feelings exclusively for my own ben benefit. I'm not influencing, I'm, I'm manipulating. Thank you so much. <laughs>